Safety in the outdoors is not something that should be underestimated. And for so many people, it's either the first thing that's on their mind when they're looking for a trail or a hike, or it's something that can inhibit them from going hiking at all. Statistically, women are more likely to do more research than men ahead of a hike. And they're more likely not to do a hike due to safety concerns. Of course, I'm a white dude, so I can't actually understand how this feels or how to truly offer advice. My experience as a white man means that I don't have the same predisposition. Certain dangers that are considered by other people, including women, I probably don't have. But one thing that is universal is that with education comes confidence. Learning the basics of hiking, like what clothes to wear, what gear to pack, what trails to hike and not hike, and what dangers exist, will help anyone feel more confident in the outdoors. Someone who shares his belief is my guest this week, Kaylee Myers, otherwise known as Kaylee Hikes. Kaylee is a hiker from North Carolina and recently has jumped into an exciting career of creating hiking content full time. One of the key messages she is putting out in, with her content is around safety while hiking and in particular for women. She doesn't shy away from the difficult conversations we need to have in the outdoors industry. Considering that it has mostly been dominated by white men for decades, there is still so little information available for, for women to understand the risks and to feel confident to take up hiking. We had a great conversation about Kaylee's content and her decision to dive into a career making great outdoor content to help others feel more confident in the outdoors. This is the Hiker Podcast. I am Owen Hamilton, and here's my conversation with Kaylee Myers, aka Kaylee Hikes. What did you have for breakfast this morning? I, okay, unfortunately, did not. I have surgery tomorrow, so I'm on a zero, I'm on a liquid diet. Oh, so my God. I, <laughs> bad timing. <laughs> I was about to say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I love breakfast. Meal of the so day. No, 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 I eat it. So I am currently on a liquid diet just to. Uh, happy to talk to you to get my mind off of how hungry I am. Oh man. <laughs> and like, is it surgery is tomorrow, is it? Okay, um, it's tomorrow, it's just an outpatient procedure. It's nothing big. It's just, it's just oh, funny gosh. that that's the question you'd ask. I'm like, don't talk about food. <laughs> Not about food. <laughs> Oh, uh, like I'm sorry, I think we might have to uh, end this conversation early because that's pretty much all I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, what what? Okay, oh yeah, I was I was about to say like what is what is normally your favorite breakfast? Well, it's just I'm just going further down the rabbit hole. Um. Uh, so uh, you were telling me that you're currently in 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 sorry sorry South Carolina. South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's and that's home. That's home. Yep. Okay. So do you want to introduce our audience to you a little bit about you, about like, you know, getting into hiking in South Carolina or where, where it all started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my, I've been an outdoorsy person my whole life. I was the kid that was getting home from school and like running into the Creek and not coming back until dinner time. So, but I never actually got into backpacking and hiking until around 2017, 2016. And, um, my husband asked me what I wanted to do for my birthday and I was just on a I was like let's go hike on the AT and we bought the most ridiculous gear and it was so heavy my pack was like 50 pounds but I had the best time of my life and it really just sparked something in me that this is what I need to be doing this is what makes me happy so I did all of the research that I could possibly do and I started on easier trails and now it's become a full passion <laughs> yeah so did, you, you said you did uh your height on the at is yeah. that to say that you did that at the at or do you did a section or um that was in 2017 in 2021 i attempted to do a through hike and at um, mile 1400 i had to go home for a family emergency so i got um, 1400 miles and i plan on probably going southbound in 2025 and just trying again okay so yeah, yeah that's the game plan all right okay and, and and like yeah that's so tough to to do something and have such a such an amazing experience and have to come off trail i'm, I'm really sorry yeah. to hear that, that yeah that. thank you it was really tough okay so like so you, you but you 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 your first kind of steps uh were back in 2017 on the at and yes you kind of came back to that so it, it is it's a white whale it's unfinished business you need to it's go back unfinished yes we have a lot to uh still do and 
Um, I was living in Georgia at the time, so we just did the very beginning of the trail, and it just, I was like, oh, I'm doing this whole trail. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully next year I can jump back on and start over backwards. Okay. Nice. <laughs> So, like, talk me through the, like the the your your kind of your evolution through hiking. So those first footsteps on the AT, and you know, it, it was it then just like this is it. I need to do this every single weekend, or is it just kind of like this gradual thing that you started yeah. to do like more and more of? And how did that? It happen? was very gradual. Um, I was just what they'd call a occasional weekend warrior. Just when I could go out, I had a full-time job. Um, I worked in a boutique hotel in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, and I was working 65, 70 hours a week there. So whenever I had time, I'd go. But um, honestly, when 2020 hit, I was let go and we didn't have any type of warning. It was just no job to come back to. And that's when I was like, I want something more than what I was doing. So I just started brainstorming and writing down everything that truly brought me joy and everything was revolving to the outdoors that I was writing down. So I, I just looked at my family one day when we were just sitting there and I was like, I think I'm just going to, in March, I'm just going to get on the AT and see how far I go. And while I was on the AT for three months, I was brainstorming every day how to make this my job and how to be able to do this for a living and to be able to just basically live outside and travel. And I started making content about it. And that's kind of how it all blossomed into me making content online and being able to quit my corporate job fully and not have to go back to anything like that and do this full time. So that's kind of how it it just all came about. It was very slowly, but it really 2020 just put like a spark in me that I was just, I was like, I have to do this. Yeah. I tell you, like, it's <laughs> myself included. Like everybody who is in hiking knows that 2020 was the year that just, we had that hockey stick moment of like, yes. everybody hikes, <laughs> yes. every single person. And cause like you had nothing else to do. Yeah. But nothing. It, but it, it just sparked so much uh, passion and joy for something that we we kind of overlooked. You know, we're yeah. all so busy with our heads down, as you said, like working so many hours per week. Um, and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, my God, mountains. Oh, my God. Nature. Yes. What am I That's, doing? <laughs> you're out there. So so you you have quit your job. So are you doing creating content uh, in the outdoors full time? Full time. I, I started that last year. I was doing other like um work from home jobs, but I'm now fully just making content. Um, I, I make most of my money through brand partnerships or affiliates and things like that. So that's kind of how I, I I'm able to continue to keep traveling. And um, basically, the more I backpack, the more opportunities I have. So I've really like lined it up for me to have a little bit more freedom than I'm used to from my past job. Yeah. And that must have been a tough decision because you're going from essentially like a, a salary. You're going from like yeah. guaranteed money in your bank account every single month to like, where is my next paycheck going? From? Yes. You know? Yeah, it was um, a few tough months. months. It definitely yeah. was. Um, I, I, I am a little privileged on the side where my husband does work full time. So I do have I do have the support from him as well. So if I did have a really bad month. It wasn't like I wasn't able to pay bills and things like that because I did have that. So I'm very transparent about that, that it's not like you can just go, you know, we, we were always living on two salaries. So so it makes it a lot more um, easier to to adapt to someone getting a new job or starting a new passion. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like it, it, it's, I guess a lot of people will, might be listening to this and, you know, thinking, oh, I can just go and do that. But it takes yeah. like consideration. Like you do have to think about like, not just yourself, but like your partner, if you're in a relationship, absolutely, your, your family, your friends and, and yourself. Like, absolutely. Yes. It's a lot um, of conversations. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. A lot of like, uh, like difficult conversations, but I suppose having those conversations and getting through them kind of it shows you how much and shows uh, the people that are around you how much you care about this and how much you want to yeah. do it so and it helps you kind of think it out as well make sure that it is the right thing to, absolutely to yeah. and i waited until i knew i was having something more steady coming in that i knew that uh, i wasn't taking a huge blow of not having a salary anymore mm. and um yeah he's been very supportive my 
my family's been very, very supportive of it. So, and, and what was that like then when you got that first uh, paycheck, like oh. from a brand that you were like, "Oh my God, I'm I'm, I'm doing it." <laughs> yes, because it was a long time that I got paid zero dollars. Like it was a wow. long time that I was just making content, hoping something was going to happen, and then it's just like that first brand that's like, "We're gonna give you this X amount of money, and you can have that." And I was just like, "Really?" <laughs> like are you sure <laughs> so it was a great feeling it was something i had to really work for and you have to be very consistent with what you're doing and it's a lot of posting and it's a lot of making videos that people actually want to watch yeah and uh, so that, that, that actually you've you hit the nail on the head with that last point like what people want to watch yes like how much time do you put into analysis of your content to go okay, this works, this doesn't work. I said this, that doesn't work. Or like, that's a word that people are going crazy about. You Absolutely. Know? How, yeah. I have a lot of charts in my laptop and my phones of um, keywords that I know or different things that more people will ask me or I'll get more DMs asking me to go further into it. So I have mm. like lists of different things I'm going to make. And I also have a list of other content creators that I look up to that I can also ask advice from and watch what they're doing and how they're doing it and just like bouncing ideas off of them. And it's it's good to have a community. And I, I love, I think I love this because I don't ever feel like there's a competition with anybody. It's that there's enough work, there's enough people, there's enough everything that it's, I'm never gonna be like, this is mine. I'm not gonna give you this information. So yeah. I think that that's, what I have found that's like comforting about it, this this line of work for me is that I, I just everyone is just so nice in a community and it's been it's been really lovely. Yeah, it really is. And I, I spoke with uh, another content creator there uh, last week. There, the episode came out today um, with Tori Talks Trails. She's in based in Pennsylvania um, and very similar idea, like a, a, or a similar um, outlook is that as soon as she started putting content out there, all of a sudden the community started like just wrapping their arms around her and saying like, yeah, Absolutely. we're in, welcome, you know? Yes, yeah. And even my friends that I met on the Appalachian Trail before I was taking this very serious, when, my, when I did start taking it serious, I was getting the nicest, like, I'm so proud of you, you know, I'm gonna support you. And it's just like, I was actually really nervous that it was going to be the opposite reaction from people and be like, what are you doing? But it was not at all. That was it was it was very supportive. Yeah. Uh, well, congratulations. Anyway, just Thank uh, you. It, it is a tough thing to do. How long are you doing that now? Um, I, this year I went full time. So around around March I went full time. Okay. Awesome. So you're 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 over six months into it now. So, yes. Uh, that's that's great. Um. Okay. So uh, uh, tell me a little bit more about the type of content that you actually put out there. Um, I focus on beginner people who are nervous or scared or have mm -hmm. questions about safety or gear or anything. I really focus on that. I feel like an advanced backpacker doesn't need basic tips. So I really, mm -hmm. I really focus on my goal is to make everyone comfortable to go out in the, the outdoors. And that can be different for everyone. It could be for someone hiking 2000 miles and it could be for someone to go to the park alone. So, and I try to make sure that that is very open that just because I'm doing this doesn't mean that you're less outdoorsy because you aren't comfortable or don't want to do that. I never want to push anyone to go outdoors alone if that scares them, but I do want to give them the tools to be able to make that decision and to feel confident. And I am a 100% believer that your safety outdoors is very high if you just have the knowledge and education of what you're actually doing and where you actually are. So to and just to know the basic things, to check the weather before you go or to know how long the trail is or what the terrain of the trail is. And um, I think that's what you have to focus on first before bear safety or human safety and things like that. Like you have to actually learn about hiking before before we can yeah. advance to those <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and, and like it, it, it i suppose it's it's it is i suppose the it's the, it's the right audience for most types of content when it comes to 
when it comes to the advanced hikers, um, they're more likely just looking for gear reviews. Like that's Absolutely. the content that's out there for them. And like that, that's it. There's a, a really good, well served kind of market for that. And like tons yeah. of YouTubers, content creators that are uh, reviewing gear. Um, but for particularly for for women as well, like trying mm -hmm. to get into the outdoors and trying to get into into hiking, there's it, there's actually not a huge amount of people out there that are, are kind of providing that type of content and showing people uh, with education comes that confidence. Absolutely. Um, and like that's uh, uh, that's a lot of what we try to do with with hikers is kind of sh say you know don't just blindly follow a line on a map. Like you do need to kind of take ownership of this yourself and and yeah, check yeah. the weather, check the terrain, check the reviews, check the comments on that trail. Yes. Um think about starting to like to learn how to get like navigation skills as well at some point. Like, Absolutely. That might be a little so bit important. Of, it's it might be a little bit like down the road, but like if you do want to do those more advanced hikes, um some of the some of the it, some of the uh, best or most well known trails in the world, like the Continental Divide Trail, sections of that, you know, you need to know where you're going. You need to know absolutely, especially if you're depending on your phone to be your map because things can happen to your phone. So you have to just definitely have that knowledge. Now, I never have had anything happen, knock on wood, but I do know that that could happen. So I do yeah. depend on my phone for maps. Of course, that's yeah. I feel like that's the best way that you're going to find where you're going. But, you know, things can happen. So you do have to have that knowledge in the back of your head on how am I going to get out of here? Yeah. So I, I I came by your your channel and I actually did notice that you were uh, kind of getting some uh, kind of negative feedback when it came to some of the the, the content you're no we obviously don't want to go into the details of like who was saying what yeah but uh, what what do you feel that 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 is caused by like why do you people do you think people are kind of pushing back on that um I, I honestly think that now this is this is my opinion one hundred percent but I feel yeah. like um, I, what I do with being alone in the woods and mm. encouraging other people to do it, I think that they push back because I'm doing something that scares them and mm. that they, I, I feel like it's, it is a nerve wracking thing, especially if you're yeah. starting, you're going to go and have someone drop you off at a trailhead and say, you know, see you in eight days. That, that can be very, <laughs> very intimidating. And I think that some people just can't wrap their head around why I would want to do that or why I would be showing other people that. And I also get negative on the opposite side of um, people will be like, you don't need to give those tips. It's more dangerous to be in a town than it is in the woods, which I agree with. I've never, I think that walking downtown somewhere and walking in the woods, you're probably going to have a lot more issues, but there's also a ton of people there that can help you and a ton of resources that you can get from being in a major town uh, on the other side of being in the woods by yourself and you do have a confrontation or something that goes down it's it's just you and that person so although it may happen more in the in the city i think that it's it is more dangerous if it happens in the woods and people get so mad when i say that yeah. <laughs> they get so angry <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny you say that about uh, about the, the comparison to to cities and to the woods because I think like like we we're, 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 humans are uh, inherently we're a communal species like we we mm -hmm. we thrive on being around other other people. Obviously, yes. we want to go to the mountains. We want to get to wild places to kind of de stress. Um, but we do feel a certain level of safety even if we're in like a very rough uh, part of, t of town there's probably still a, a certain aspect like okay civilizations here i like i yes. have amenities i have like uh, you know uh shelter i have like things that are exactly. around food, water um but when you're in the in the the, the great unknown uh it's it's a, it's a little bit more scary and i think obviously when it comes to in the, the the outdoors industry up until now it's predominantly been male and the the resources have been there for for men to uh to to kind of be safer or feel safer in, in the woods and you know like we all know what's going on in the world like when it exactly. comes to like attacks and stuff like that so like uh that coupled with what i said about like it being the great unknown women inherently don't feel as safe as men do in the outdoors absolutely so yeah. they, they are out there look and 
do you mind me asking then is it is it more common are the negative comments coming more from men or or women or it's mostly men who i get the comments from okay. but i do get some women that i mean i've been told um you know make sure your mom has an updated photo of you or i can't wait to see you on the news as a missing person or wow. yeah it's like i mean they get a lot more rough than that but those kind of comments mostly come from women um the comments from men are just like you know basically i shouldn't be doing it or i shouldn't be telling women that it's dangerous because i'm making every man a predator now and i never most of my hiking family is men it's not it's nothing like that i just i'm not i'm not going to just meet a man on trail and instantly trust him and you know go off and skip down the trail with him so it's just it's just the, it's a lot more conversation and us passing each other, which if you've done a long distance trail before, you know that you just leapfrog over the same mm. people constantly. So eventually you end up in a trail town with them and stuff and you start talking and then that becomes your trail family. And that's, and it ends up being, I mean, my best friends in the entire world I met on that trail, I would do anything for them and they would do anything for me. And, but it wasn't just an instant, like we're going to be best friends and split hotel rooms together now. So, yeah. so, um, but yeah, most of those kind of comments come from men, but the other ones from women. But it's just like what we were talking about earlier on with difficult conversations. We just, we have to exactly. have these difficult conversations. If we don't, uh, uh, people, it, it'll just get shoved under the rug and we yes. will forever forget about it. So it's, it's kudos to, to to you and other content creators that are out there that are having those discussions and saying, Thank no, we're, we're going to have this conversation. We're not pointing the finger to, at anybody. Exactly. We're pointing the finger at the issue and saying, yes. here's it's the statistics of what's going on. Like we, we don't have to argue about that because it's a fact and it's not anyone's opinion on what's going on. So yeah. That's definitely so, um so what's what's next what's your next are you're currently in the are you in the middle of a trip or are you at the tail end or what's going on i know you have a surgery tomorrow so <laughs> i have no a few meals days anyway off, <laughs> but um i'm going to the smoky mountains this weekend with my right. family we're just doing a little cabin trip and then um my next backpacking trip i think i i don't know for sure all of my long distance trips literally i'm like two weeks before i'm like i'm doing this i don't plan anything out which people think is crazy but um i'm i'm thinking about doing the florida trail in january wow. and going through that and i really want to do the arizona trail right after that so i'm thinking those are going to be my two long trails next year and um my husband and I are purchasing an RV this year so that we can start just full-time traveling with our dogs. And um, so that's that's exciting for me because I want to go visit more national parks and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been recently doing a lot, of, a lot of research into the national parks in the U.S. and just... I can't they're wait so to go over and see them. I've, <laughs> I've, I've been to Yosemite. I've seen some of them, um, but they're just absolutely spectacular. Yes, uh, I, yeah um but the florida trail that sounds like it could be could be fun very flat <laughs> i'm excited about that i'm actually really excited about doing the end of the palmetto trail that i did was very flat and i was mm. just i was hitting like 35 miles like easily because it's yeah. just I, i'm just i was just like let's go and my husband would pick up my dog in the middle part so that because i don't want him to walk that long and it being so local was so easy because at one point I was like 20 minutes from from where I live. So it was like he could just literally come and bring me a burger in the middle of my hike. So it was like it was awesome. <laughs> so hopefully the Florida Trail brings me that. I know it's a lot of road walking, but I'm I'm yeah. I'm excited to try out the swamp more. Just something different. Yeah, I've, I like the, the the Florida Trail has definitely come onto my radar a lot more recently um i don't know why it just it just has i think a lot more people are are hiking the trail absolutely and yeah more, a lot more content creators are hiking the trail so it's it's getting more popular um and maybe it is one of those ones where you're like i can i can hike fast on this you know i can yeah. get this done, i can get this done quick um a, a, a buddy of mine actually did it two years ago uh yeah 2021 he did it and uh i don't think it was far off the fkt now i think the fkt is now com like completely obliterated yeah um, 
but uh i i actually was at the trail uh the terminus um last year uh, okay we were on a family trip over to to uh to florida so i got to see the uh oh. the terminus yeah a lot of gators <laughs> yeah yeah i live in south carolina so we have a lot of gators already here so <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just like we don't have them in ireland so oh <laughs> yes. yeah right right <laughs> like we see a uh a, a badger every now and again that's probably oh, as that's uh... fun though <laughs> <laughs> and then the arizona trail then another another hot trail but a, a, a bit more elevation yes yes and i thrive in the heat i i am like genuinely sad that it's fall time and going into winter like i am such a summer person for and uh but i'm i'm excited to 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 do two different locations in the united states that i've never really hiked in before i went to arizona for the first time this year in june and i did a couple like day hikes and stuff and i was like oh yeah we're doing this like this is i was watching like scorpions and i was just that's mind-blowing to me <laughs> amazing I yeah we did a we did a, a, a hike in have you heard of tenerife which is one of the the spanish islands down off the coast of uh, of africa no uh, i haven't but I, I need to look into it the highest the highest mountain in spain is actually on this uh, one of these islands it's a volcano called uh, tede oh. and uh it, it's like a it's three thousand six hundred meters so that's like about eleven thousand feet i think roughly wow around. yeah, yeah um but at the at the summit it's because it's a volcano first of all it stinks because oh, of the sulfur um and then second of all there are these like fan sized spiders they're just huge no <laughs> we we're not expecting it at all because it's like a it's a sunrise hike you got to get up there before before sunrise or you can't get to the summit and uh we were just like oh it's just going to be like you know lava and you know like uh cool lava so real kind yeah. of like shingly and then we got up to the top and it was just like all these spiders everywhere we're like what the what are we doing, <laughs> what are we doing here? Uh, but it was worth it it was, uh, it was so spectacular so i highly recommend Tener tenerife or madeira the two kind yeah, of islands definitely if you're coming that sounds there. amazing a volcano is definitely on my list my husband's from costa rica so we've been like talking all the time we're like we have to we gotta do some hiking in costa rica amazing yeah um so I, I guess throughout your your career, mm -hmm. <laughs> your six month career in the outdoors, um, <laughs> but I suppose your career in hiking, your 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 love of hiking, what's yeah. been the the standout moment? What is there something in particular that you've learned, or, or or a trip, or something that stands out as like this is what I think about when I think about hiking? It has to be the the AT. Even though I didn't finish it, it was definitely life changing for me. It was it was just such a I, I felt so strong and so just i don't even know how to explain it i was just so proud of myself that every yeah. day i was getting up and i was doing this and i was happy every day i just the people that i met that trail changed my life i i i recommend people even if you can only do like a small section it's such a community trail that it's like you don't go a day without seeing people if that's kind of what you you like and the towns around it are just so welcoming and so nice that i think the highlight of my whole hiking career would probably be the at and then second would be the trail i just did the palmetto trail just because i did it alone and yeah. i was um my friend did it with me the first uh, five days and then when after he left it was just my dog and i and it was just a uh, mostly a mental um uh hardship for me more than physical because it was like i was i my dog and i were having full conversations with each other at that point <laughs> i love the way you say with each other <laughs> with, he was speaking back, back and forth. <laughs> yeah, i was answering so i was just like we like hit that time where i was like okay i need to go into town and see somebody like i've just yeah. been i've been because i saw nobody on that trail like it was just me every day um the only time I would see someone is if there was like a parking lot to get to a waterfall or something and everyone was just trying to get to that waterfall, but I was like going the opposite way. So it was just a very alone trail and I I loved it. I really enjoyed that. Amazing. Yeah, it's it, it, the, 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 I suppose the Appalachian Trail, uh, I just wanted to hone in on a point you said there around it being like a social or community trail. 
Yes. I think a lot of people think that when you go and do these trails that you're going to be like weeks and weeks and weeks completely on your own. Yeah. Um, like that may have been what it was like maybe 20, 30 years ago. Exactly. Uh, I, I've had plenty of people that have been on the podcast that have spoken about that. Like they've done the hike, they've done the trail back in like the, the 80s and like you hike for like a week and you just see nobody. Yeah. And then you yeah, not, anymore. And you, and not anymore. It's it, it, it's it, like uh, there's some people that that don't like that there's some people that, that that love that but that's what you're kind of signing up for these days Absolutely. is you're you're going to meet other like-minded people or you're just going to meet other people that are are kind of at a moment in their life they're they they either want to figure something out they're going through something or they're just they're just looking for a big experience that is um, so true every through hiker i have met is trying to make a big change or trying to go and fix something mentally that's going on or something big that happened in their life. And I think that's how we can all come together because we're all kind of going through something to say, Hey, we're going to go hiking for six months. Like something is going on. <laughs> so, and I think that that's how we can all relate on trail as well is that it's like, it could even just be transitioning from high school to college or, yeah you know, college before your big career or whatever it is, it doesn't have to be anything like, you know, tragic, but it's, it's, everyone has a story that's through hiking. Yeah. And you said already, but do you keep in contact with the people that you, you, you met on the trail? Oh yeah. My actual trail family, it's three of us that are like super close and we talk every single day. Um, we've been on five or six hikes since we've been home together. And, um, uh, one lives in North Carolina, one lives in Ohio. So we're like eight hours from each other. So we kind of just meet in the middle and go hiking. And um, I have a ton of friends that I've met, but those two are just, I would do anything for them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the trail provides. Absolutely. And they provided me my best friends. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, um, uh, so uh, if, sorry, if there was one thing you would leave your audience now because it, it, we're talking like the beginners some people who might be listening to this that are trying to get into hiking for the first time mm -hmm. uh what would be your kind of your yeah i would say one but you probably have a list like this is what you do for a living so yeah um, my my first advice is to do it scared don't wait until you're not scared to go and do something new in your life like every no matter what you do in your life you're going to be scared to do it so you just gotta put that behind and just go um, that's my mental advice. My like actual physical advice is to invest in gear that's worth investing in. Don't look online at, you don't have to get the top most expensive things when you're just starting out, because this may not be something that you're passionate about and you don't want to get stuck with thousands of dollars of gear. Just go very basic when you're starting. And, um, to know what the 10 essentials are and to learn how to use your gear before you're outside. So do do shakedown hikes where you're actually having to use all of your gear, even if it's just in your backyard so that you're not in the middle of the woods and you realize you're not really confident on how to put your tent up or you don't know how to hang your food bag or something like that. Like it's all about just practice and that can just be done in your backyard. You don't have to go on a extravagant hike to go and practice and also buy your backpack last. That's my best oh I've yeah that's my that advice I, just because you don't know how big your gear is you don't know what you're going to get and you don't know what yeah. size pack you're actually going to need so a lot of people will get like a 45 liter and it's not big enough or they'll get a 60 liter and only half of it's full so mm. my advice is to get your backpack very last that's actually i wish i had that advice when i bought my first backpack <laughs> I thought my backpack was way too big i was like my i'm gonna feet. need i'm gonna need food for like five weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mine was too <laughs> um, that's awesome and I, I suppose that's a that's a really good idea for i suppose a, a lesson for for anyone in any way of life it is like yeah. go in be scared yes. and do it scared uh yeah that's 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 some good advice <laughs> thank you <laughs> um yeah thanks so much uh, sorry you forgot one thing uh you need to follow kaylee hikes uh, oh Instagram. yes please yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, Kaylee. It's been thank a, a joy talking to you and learning a bit more about you, what you do, and 
yeah, the really good messages that you're putting out there to the hiking community, um, in, in particular for for women that are trying to get into the into the hiking world. Um, uh, if people want to keep in touch, I obviously mentioned Instagram. Is there any other platforms where you you put out contents that you want people to check out? Yes, I also put um, content on TikTok, and I just started a YouTube channel, so I will be doing YouTube as well. All Kaylee hikes across everything. So awesome! Well, I'll put keep it links. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Keep it uh, a brand. It's all about brand. Exactly. Um, so I'll put uh, I'll put all that stuff into the show notes. So anybody watching this on YouTube you can see it in the comments, or if you're looking uh, listening on Spotify, you should see it in the the show notes. Uh, Kaylee, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you so much for uh, having me. Yeah, no worries. And uh, look, best of luck with the surgery tomorrow. And hope Thank you get you. back up on your feet and that you enjoy your 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 family trip. And then yeah, uh, look forward to uh, to seeing your travels on the Florida Trail and the and Thank the. Uh, you. Trail. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much again to Kaylee for joining us on the podcast and having that conversation. And thank you for listening in. Tune in again next week when we hear another interview from another person who inspires us all to feel more confident and explore the outdoors. Until then, happy trails.